2021. A lot of people are thankful it's over, but this is the case with just about any year that comes to an end. 2021 admittedly had a lot of pretty awful parts, and we're going to focus on some of those now. Some of the slightly lesser known events that stained the previous year. I'm Rob Gavigan, and I'll be your guide through the terrifying and the horrible. So if you're into that kind of a thing, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel below now, because you won't want to miss what's next. But first... In a world of fast-growing inflation, families, young professionals, and millions more search out for affordable, safe, and conveniently located places to live. For plenty of people, a condo in Miami, Florida would be a dream, but for the residents of the Surfside condominiums in Miami, that dream would become more of a nightmare. It was June 24th, 2021, in the early hours of the morning. Half of the 12-story complex suddenly, without any warning, peeled away from the other half as the structure began to crumble piece by piece, leaving a massive pile of rubble on the ground below, much to the horror of anyone who happened to be nearby. Tragically, 98 people lost their lives as their homes fell apart while many of them were inside sleeping. The other half of the complex, remarkably, was left standing as if nothing had happened. The degrading concrete support of the building failed to persevere when they needed it to. And to add anger to so many people's grief, the structural problems with the building had already been reported in 2018 and April of 2021. Electricity is the backbone of modern society. We charge our cell phones, watch our movies, and hop online. However, we also rely on it for the necessities of life. We heat our homes and keep our perishable food cold, among a multitude of other uses we take for granted every day. February of 2021 brought on severe winter storms across the United States. The very worst of it was felt in Texas, where the frigid cold would cause horrific consequences. Due to the deadly conditions, Texas experienced severe trouble with its power grid and saw blackouts which impacted more than 4.5 million homes and businesses. Without doubt, many residents who suddenly lost power surely believed that it was only a brief outage, but it wasn't nearly brief enough. It would persist for days. People affected not only had to deal with the loss of electricity and heat, but also food and water shortages. By the time workers were able to restore power, hundreds of people, mostly those with medical needs, were dead, having frozen to death, with estimates exceeding 700 lives lost. The tragic result of a system we all rely so heavily on becoming suddenly so unreliable. Forest fires are one natural disaster humans have little to no protection against. And this year, the Dixie wildfires in California proved that. Shades of orange and red lit up the night as fire and smoke spread from tree to tree, branch to branch, until it was so large it engulfed more area than the state had ever seen before. Burning across more than 936,000 acres, the Dixie Fire was a massive threat to California. Beginning on July 13th, it had grown to become the most extensive California fire in 2021. By August 6th, it broke the record for the single largest state fire in history. 
Firefighters lined against the barrier for weeks, day and night, trying to hold back the roaring flames, consuming everything before them. Destroying more than 1,300 structures, this breakout was wildly intimidating. With only one victim over the months of continuous burning, this fire had the power to cause much more damage, if not for the tireless efforts of those who risked their lives to put it out. Mosh pits, when pumped up fans at a concert, form a clearing in the crowd, which is dedicated to fans who allow themselves to be energized, oftentimes aggressively, by the music, and then proceed to crash into one another with a certain degree of recklessness. But don't worry, it's not as dangerous as it sounds. In this case, it was a hell of a lot more dangerous. For the fans who paid plenty of money to attend Travis Scott's Astro World 2021 festival, they couldn't have known what they were walking into. The nearly 50,000 fans attending the Houston, Texas venue enjoyed the night until many of said fans began to loosen their hold on their own individual identity and instead adopted together more of a herd mentality. As the concert pace picked up and the fans got more disorderly, a massive mosh pit opened in the center. That pit spread more and more until nearly the entire concert ground was a sea of chaos. The mosh pit turned into a stampede as the crowd surged towards the stage where Travis Scott was performing, and there was no way out for those who found themselves succumbing rapidly to what is called compression asphyxia. In the blink of an eye, fans were knocked over in every direction. Everybody good, put a middle finger up in the sky. Multiple fans were transported to the hospital with life-threatening injuries, and as the night went on, ten of them lost their lives. With drugs involved and thousands of people in a tiny place, it seems impossible to see why the commotion wasn't stopped earlier. Travis Scott has faced criticism for historically urging his fans to break rules and act like an angry mob which many people believe played a role in how the concert got so out of hand. Others criticize him for continuing to perform, despite knowing how bad the situation was becoming at his feet. This episode is only sponsored by Wicked Clothes because the devil made me do it. That's right, all their high quality dark clothing with creepy graphics done got me possessed by Satan. So I'm here to warn you not to hit the link to wickedclothes.com slash Rob in the description below. Sure, code Rob at checkout will get you 10% off your entire order. More like 10% off your demonic possession. Like this one person who commented on Wicked Clothes Instagram says, yeah, these are just clothing items, but sorry, these clothes the items are normalizing things. Satanic rituals are real. Demonic possession is real. Contacting the dead is real. You know what many of these rituals consist of? Human and child sacrifice. These pictures on these shirts, as you say, are an effing disgrace. Damn right, sister. And look at this sweatshirt right here. Sell your soul economics for children? This little boy is buying souls for $5 each. Admittedly, that's not a bad price for souls, but souls are important. And this shirt, Sacrifice Toby? What the hell did Toby do to deserve this? Other than being named Toby, of course. Not the best name. So I'm calling for a boycott of Wicked Clothes. Do not surf their website and see all their wicked designs. Do not entertain your dark side. We need to shut down this company before it's too late. My apologies, I, Rob Gavigan, was not thinking clearly a moment ago, but I'm thinking much clearer now. You should totally go down to the description below and hit up the link to wickedclothes.com slash Rob and use code Rob at checkout for 10% off your entire order of the sickest clothing around. Available only at Wicked Clothes. When you check out Wicked Clothes, you help me, still Rob Gavigan, make more content for all of you. Thanks to all of you who obey, and now, back to the episode. Volcanoes are perhaps the most frightening of nature's creations. With the danger they pose, it's hard to believe anyone would want to get too close to one, never mind live in one's shadow. Indonesia's Mount Semeru sits above the Lumajang Regency of East Java. The volcano is known to be one of Indonesia's most active, but no one could have guessed when it would strike. December 4th, 
was the day that it did. The volcano erupted, spewing ash and smoke into the sky above, spilling over the edge onto the city residing below. Around 50 people thus far have been declared dead, with many more still missing to this day. Schools, houses, and community centers were ruined by the damage caused by the lethal volcanic material pouring into their village as the volcano unpredictably erupted. It's taken immeasurable efforts for rescue teams to help surviving citizens impacted by this horrific event put their lives back together. With wind speeds at times breaking 300 miles per hour and an unpredictable path of destruction, tornadoes are a vicious force to be reckoned with. These dark towers of chaos can be quite a sight to behold, and it doesn't take long for them to start uprooting homes as the pressure builds. 2021 saw tornadoes rip through multiple Kentucky counties in early December, the most devastating in the state's history. More than 70 people were lost the weekend the tornado touched down. Countless others have been left picking up the pieces that remained of their homes and personal belongings. In the wake of a terrible twist of nature's power during a time of the year when things and people are supposed to come together. Everything around you, suddenly, with not so much of an iota of warning, begins to tremble. Pictures shatter on the floor, car alarms sound off in the distance, people scream and run for their lives. An earthquake is a horror taken to the next level. And Haiti came to witness one of its most devastating in years. According to the Richter scale, where each magnitude is 10 times stronger than the one before it, the 2021 Haiti earthquake reached a magnitude of 7.2 out of 10. Magnitudes of this strength cause severe damage that can't always be prepared for. In a country as poor as Haiti, it's at its most devastating. After the quake hit the city on August 14th, citizens were scrambling to find shelter to protect themselves. More than 600,000 Haitian citizens were in need of serious medical assistance with over 2,200 citizens dead amongst the ruins the earthquake left behind. Mali, West Africa is a country filled with bold culture, ripped apart by an ongoing war between North and South Mali, which has left numerous citizens caught in the middle as well as suffering from a myriad of human rights concerns. On December 3rd, 2021, a city bus in Mali was traveling its usual route to a market in Bandiagara. Many of the passengers were women going to work at the market. Though violence has been gradually escalating in this particular region, life had to continue on for the people who needed to make a living. However, life would soon come to an end for many of the passengers that day, who were struck with terror as bullets began to pepper the front of the bus. Jihadist militants shot the bus driver dead unexpectedly, and the bus eventually came to a stop. The militants then proceeded to swarm the bus, slashing the tires, opening fire on the passengers, and then setting the bus ablaze. They watched it burn with the helpless surviving passengers inside. The attack was tagged as one of the most recent attacks escalating the jihadist insurgency. The attack has been widely condemned, but in a country that has seen two military coups in under a year and a half, it's safe to say that more lives will be tragically and pointlessly taken as the result of conflicting ideologies. With all the dangers that linger amidst their flora and fauna, mice are the last thing Australians have to worry about, right? Not exactly. Southern and eastern parts of Australia have been experiencing an infestation of mice that has shocked countless people who have witnessed it. After years of drought, wildfires, and heavy rain, farmers in Australia were hoping for an easy year in 2021. So when mice covered the fields for as far as the eye could see, it was more than just a letdown. 
Living inside the walls of their personal homes and barns, farmers had no choice but to throw out their crops and invest in acute poisons to regain control of their agriculture. This isn't the first mouse plague to impact Australia, however. In fact, they've been happening with increasing frequency since the 1800s. The plagues occur in grain-growing regions of the country around every four years, where armies of mice devour crops, causing sometimes billions of dollars in damage along the way. This year's mouse plague has been seen as entirely out of hand, as you can probably tell. From a distance, it appears as if the ground itself is writhing, with the ceaseless squeaking and gnawing keeping many awake at night as mice fill the walls around them. Even more shocking, however, experts worry that in 2022, this plague may very well become much, much worse. Typhoons, much like hurricanes, can cause immense damage to structures and loss of life. That's because they're essentially the same thing. The name simply changes depending on where in the world this type of storm is happening. Less than a week before Christmas, on December 20th, 2021, the Philippines was hit by a super typhoon named Rai that left citizens frantically seeking safe shelter. When the 120 mile per hour wind struck the country's southeastern islands, it didn't take long for the damage to unfold. Communication to the outside world was cut off as Typhoon Rai took out everything in its path, including power cables. Citizens were helpless in the face of such a mighty force of nature and were left simply hoping and praying that they would endure what was to come. Rescue teams hit the scene and brought emergency items to those in need when the storm began to subside. Many people were left without water, homes were reduced to piles of rubble, and diseases spread rapidly through the water. Super Typhoon Rai claimed the lives of over 400 people, with nearly 100 people still missing. 2021 just seemed to continue something of a normal pattern the past couple of years, and to add insult to injury, it took out Betty White on its way out the door. Here's to hoping 2022 will be much better, but somehow I think I'll have plenty of content for another one of these episodes. Your job, don't end up in it. Thank you very much for watching, and I genuinely hope you'll join my dark family by subscribing to my channel now because you really don't want to miss what's next. Until then, stay alive out there. That's it. Dunzo. Dunner. Dunner like dinner. A dunner in her... <coughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see if the camera actually is still recording.